All right, I hope you're sitting down. This video, we're gonna look at color. You ready, city, boom. It's green and black. It's not very exciting, I know. I'm going to try and convince you that you don't need a lot of colors when it comes to your wireframes. You should probably leave it gray, but hey, we're learning about color in this video. Let's jump in and I'll show you what you need to know. All right, to work with color, um, select on something. We're gonna use this big uh, big rectangle here. It's the default color for Figma. All you do is click on it, okay? So it now fill, click on it once, and you get this little guy. If you've never used a color picker before, this little dot's where our color is. You can click him and drag him around, okay? So at the moment, you can only pick red, okay? To change it, this little hue slider here, drag it along to the kind of zone that you want it to be. I'm gonna pick some sort of greeny thing, okay? And then move this around. Okay, to get the uh, full saturation, no saturation, light, dark, somewhere in there. Okay, other things you should know about in here. If you want full white, just click, drag, and drag it like past, you know, like just keep going and it'll be full white. And either of these dark ones down the bottom are gonna be the same. Okay, so white, black, or that one is black, doesn't matter. And I'm gonna pick some sort of light greeny color. So you could pick it from the brand, okay, or just pick like light blue is the, probably the most common kind of, you know, wireframe color. It's the default in like XD and a few other ones. So you end up seeing this kind of like mm, tealy blue thing throughout. I'm going to pick a slightly greener version. You pick anything you like. Other things to know about color is transparency down the bottom here. You can make things slightly transparent, which makes no sense unless I bring this all the way to the front. Okay, so I'm using my square bracket. You can see it's kind of covering things with a bit of transparency. I'm going to go back to, actually I was going to change that there at 100%. It doesn't matter whether you do it here, zoop, and you can see it there 100%, or you just type it in here and you say I want it to be 50. Or well, same again, you can kind of use your up and down arrows to kind of go through it all. So I want mine to be 100, perfect. Okay, and if you are a bit more of a color nerd than you might be, like me, okay, Hexadecimal numbers, that's the kind of like web version of a color. You might not like that. You might like the RGB versions. There you go. It's RGBA, so you've still got transparency at the end. Red, green, blue. You might be mixing colors from maybe a corporate spec manual or something else. Um, other colorways, CSS, you probably, if you're a developer, you might be working this way. Okay, your RGBA colors, you can type them in there. Um, hue saturation, luminance, I don't often use. I use this quite a bit. Hue saturation, brightness. Um, actually, do I do it in this one? Probably not in this program very often. I do it a lot in things like Premiere and uh, Illustrator, but not here in Figma. So I'm gonna to stick to the hexadecimal number. Other things I wanna point out is the eyedropper. So we've got this here. I wanna steal this color. So I select on it, go to my fill color, click on the little eyedropper, and you'll notice, can you see up here, there's like a zoomed in version. And watch this, I can move it around. Can you see it just zooms in on things? So it's, you know, ours is pretty easy because we can pick this big rectangle, but sometimes you're trying to pick a teeny tiny bit of color from like that bit. It's going to be that weird light gray. Okay, so eyedropper, I'm going to click on this one. Same with this fella. You, eyedropper, you. Now to get to that eyedropper, very often I won't be going into the color and pick it to do it. So I'm going to undo to get my grays back. So I select on it. There is the shortcut for eye, for eyedropper. Like I, <laughs> not E-Y-E, -E, the letter I. Okay, it's a shortcut. So selected it, hit the eyedropper, click on that. There's a lot of that going on. However you want, get that, this, all the same color for me. And be resilient. Don't try and add a bunch of colors. Okay, keep it really just black, grays, whites, and you know, a color just to sex it up a tiny bit. Okay, when you start adding color palettes to it, you again start entering different parts uh, you know, to the conversation about, oh, is this the right color? Is it the right brand color? Just keep it generic, keep it gray. Then nobody's gonna complain. The last thing about colors is um, down here, can you see document colors? You're like, oh great, those are the colors that I've used already. Okay, so this though gets mad big and not very useful. Um, it's fine for the moment because you're like, okay, I wanna go back to that gray that we had before. There it is there, it's something that's been used. Okay, or there's that green. Is that the green? It's the same green. It gets, yeah, later on, we're gonna look at this and we're gonna look at team library colors. It's quite later in the document, plus we're gonna look at something called color styles in the not too distant future, where we kind of tidy it all up and get a bit more consistent. But document colors will show everything that have been used in this document, so it gets a bit mad, but that's what they are. All right, that's the basics of colors. Let's jump into the next video. Actually, we're going nowhere. It's driving you mad, it's driving me mad. 
<laughs> you can't do that then. Uh, so this needs to be bigger. We're going to do some responsive buttons later on, but for the moment, I can't live with this. It needs to be bigger and this needs to be more in the center. One of the things I want to show you, a little shortcut might be handy, is because you want to like make it bigger on both sides, you can hold down the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and when you're scaling things, instead of just like dragging the edges and then trying to move it around, if you hold down the yeah, Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, kind of does it from both sides, and you're like, that's better if you... All right, now we can move on to the next video. Is that even in the middle, Dan? Yeah, a range, look. That is better. Whew. Let's do the same thing with this one. I got closer with that one. Some of you are like, why does he care so much? And then some of you be like, oh my goodness, finally, fix the button. And will he ever get rid of the full stop? It's not lining up properly, is it? Anyway, let's get on to the next video now. All right, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, consider giving it a thumbs up -y likey thing and also consider subscribing to the channel. I've got lots more Figma tutorials here. Also, if you do want to go further with Figma, I've got a full course called Figma Essentials. Uh, check out the card up here or link in the description. All right, bye for now.